Perfect off-season plan time on the Cleveland Browns report. Matthew Peterson here running through my perfect five-step plan for Andrew Barry, who I know is watching right now. So write it down so you don't forget. So let's run through some of the facts surrounding the Browns offseason before we get into step one, because I think this could serve as a good primer, a good baseline here. The Browns are currently 20-ish million dollars over the salary cap. So they're going to have to get below the salary cap, whether that is moving on from players or restructuring contracts. They also don't have the best bat draft ammunition. Some would say it's the worst, actually. They are, I believe, the last team to make a draft pick, unless we get some trades. And they only have one pick in their two picks in the top 100, a second and a third. They've got a pair of fives, a pair of sixes, and a seventh. And they need help at wide receiver, linebacker, unless they bring back some of their players. Running back, if Nick Chubb does not get good rehab news. Defensive line, because three out of their four rotating defensive linemen are free agents. And I'll go interior offensive line as well. Some depth is needed there, but also might be playing planning for the future if the Browns plan to move on from either Petonio or Teller before their contract is up. So with that being said, step number five, as we count down to number one, for a perfect offseason is actually re-signing Darius Smith. This perfect offseason, by the way, is not sign the top five free agents and call it a day. That's not going to happen. Now, I'm still going to live in fantasy land a little bit, but I'm going to try and have a sense of, of realism while running through this. So Darius Smith this past season did not get to that coveted 10-plus sacks, the double-digit sacks that we always use to evaluate whether or not edge rushers are good or not. But he did have one outlier metric, 60 pressures from PFF. 60 pressures is the name of the game right now. You know how batting average went out and OPS came in? I'm sensing the same for evaluating edge rushers. Sacks are about to go out, not as bad as batting average did, though, and pressures is about to come in. Because the Browns' defensive line, they've got a lot of impending free agents. Shelby Harris joining Darius Smith, Jordan Elliott, and Maurice Hurst. I'm sure Andrew Barry would love to bring back some of those players. But I'm a big fan of the idea of re-signing Darius Smith because you won't have to break the bank for him. He's getting up there in the age column. He's not coming off a fantastic year where there's going to be a bunch of teams lining up to pay hand over fist for his services. He comes off a five-and-a-half sack season. But like I said, it's the pressures that really jump out to me because his PFF pass rush grade, 87.4. That was top 10. His win percentage, 18.5. That ranked 8th out of 57 players. So we're talking about a guy that was winning a lot. He was pressuring the quarterback, but ultimately he wasn't logging the sacks. What does that mean, right? Ultimately, it means that he is disrupting plays. He is causing the offense to have aborted plays, failures, incomplete passes, just objective, bad plays offensively. And it might not result in a loss of uh, yards for them, but if we can change second and 10 to third and 10 because of Darius Smith on the first play got to Joe Burrow and forced an incomplete pass, I'm in. Now, Andrew Barry, in his end-of-the-year press conference, talked about this exact thing when speaking to the media. I would say on the Brown sack production this past season, I would say probably the bigger picture is we're actually probably a little bit more focused on how much pressure we create because ultimately that's what leads to negative plays for an offense and an advantageous plays for a defense. And we were really pleased with that this year. So your average casual Browns fan might go, oh, they re-signed to Darius Smith. Why? He had five and a half sacks last year. Because it's all about pressures, baby. It's all about pressure. Now, there are some other very notable free agent edge rushers out there, but Josh Allen and Brian Burns are going to be likely re-signed candidates. And if not, the Browns, I don't think, will be able to afford them. Chase Young is an interesting prospect. I know a lot of the Buckeyes fans watching right now would love to have him return to Ohio, but I'm questioning his effort at times. And that does not seem like a good fit for a Jim Schwartz defense. Jonathan Grenard, he had a breakout year with the Texans. I'm sure Houston would love to bring him back as well, but that could be someone that Andrew Barry swings for. But Darius Smith at 31, I know that might not seem, and it isn't a long-term option opposite of Miles Garrett, but I think if you could sign Darius Smith to a contract like this one, two years, $12 million, $6 million a season, like I'm looking for bargains here, right? I'm looking for good deals because $20 million over the cap, 
You can make some moves, but you're not going to be able to sign all of your dream players. And I think Zadarius Smith for $6 million a season and you could allocate your funds to other positions is a good deal for Cleveland. So let me know. Should the Browns re-sign Zadarius Smith? Yes or no? Scroll on down to the comment section. Be, be honest with me. Do you want to see Zadarius Smith come back? Perfect offseason step number four. Draft Texas defensive tackle Byron Murphy. So I've been honing in on my draft coverage, and with the Browns not picking until the mid-50s around number two, the Browns are in an interesting spot trying to identify who they want to take. And free agency will be a big factor in where the Browns go. But the Browns, with their second-round pick, that's the first time they are on the clock, no first-rounder, as we all know, they have got to make that pick count because they have some holes on this team after free agency that they may not be able to fill through free agency. And if that's the case, last year the Browns went into the draft having all their homework done. The draft was essentially extra credit for 2023 production. Right? Did the Browns get much out of their rookies? Dewan Jones stepped in and filled in very nicely for Jack Conklin, but if Jack Conklin doesn't get hurt, the Browns kind of go that whole season without needing to have big plays being made by rookies from their team. This year, I don't think that's going to be the case. I think this year they are going to have to get some big plays out of their rookies, and I want to see Byron Murphy be an early draft target for them if he slips out of round one. This is where it kind of becomes a dream slash perfect offseason because he's right there on the fence of round one to round two. But I'm old enough to remember when the Browns were mocked to take Siaka Ika in round two. They got him in round three. When they were going to take Perrion Winfrey in round two, they got him in round four. Interior defensive linemen, they're not the sexiest pick for GMs. Now, some background on Murphy. Three-year player, one-year starter down in Austin. He was a 2023 second-team All-American. He's also the number two interior defensive lineman on Mel Kuyper's big board. Now, Byron Murphy, this past season for the Longhorns, had eight and a half tackles for loss, five sacks, and seven QB hits. Now, he's got another teammate entering the draft, Sweat. He's more of your run stopper. Murphy's more of your athletic defensive lineman. And the Browns added their tree stump last offseason in Dalvin Tomlinson. And if I think about what Andrew Barry looks for in defensive tackles, Jordan Elliott, Tommy Togiai, um, Perrion Winfrey... Maybe he, ta he breaks up that run because it wasn't very productive, but he likes the slightly slimmer defensive tackles that can rush the quarterback as well. And Byron Murphy can do that for you. We have three more steps to get to on this perfect offseason plan, but first, lock yourself in for the best upcoming free agency news and rumors, as that is just around the corner. We are at 33,000, or we are almost at 33,500 subscribers, a little under 300 to go. So, Chip, 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 chip and away, baby. Hit the sub button and get yourself the best free Browns content. Number three, trade for 49ers linebacker Dre Greenlaw. I told you it was a perfect, and I told you it was slightly a fever dream, but I think this would be a great move for the Browns, especially if you want to go all in on 2024. Now, Dre Greenlaw has been a fantastic piece of this 49ers defense, and I think if you gave San Francisco a call, after they win the Super Bowl, potentially, they could be riding that uh, Super Bowl high, and they'll just say yes to anything. And maybe the Browns offer a 2025 third-round pick. Now, let's talk about Dre Greenlaw in more detail for a moment. He's got one year remaining on his contract, which has an $8.1 million base salary. That is what the Browns would be picking up. Now, the 49ers, for any Niners fans watching right now, I'm sure you don't like the idea of trading, trading Dre Greenlaw. And it's not something that many people are forecasting. But if you think a few steps ahead for San Francisco, and they've got impending free agents like Brandon Ayuk and Brock Purdy coming up soon, they're going to have a lot of mouths to feed. And maybe they have to make sacrifices. And if you're thinking about what positions teams make sacrifices at, off-ball linebacker tends to be one of the first ones to go. And the Browns, who need another linebacker next to JOK, because Taki Taki and Anthony Walker are both free agents, well, this would be a big upgrade, in my opinion. Dre Greenlaw in 2023, 120 tackles, five tackles for loss, able to get after the quarterback, one and a half sacks, four pass breakups. I'm a big fan of Dre Greenlaw. I think he's one of the up-and-coming linebackers in our game. And once again, when you look at the Browns' linebacker room, 
if they don't plan on re-signing Anthony Walker and Taki Taki to back-to-back one-year contracts, maybe they give San Francisco a call and ask what it would take to get Dre Greenlaw because the 49ers know they're not going to be able to pay everyone and they are fortunate to get by right now with Brock Purdy making $750,000 a year, but there's going to be a bill to be paid in the few in, a, in the coming years, and there may be casualties as a result. And so maybe the 49ers decide, let's get a draft pick for Greenlaw while we can before we have to let him walk in free agency. This would be an all-in move for 2024. I'm not even 100% certain that the Browns would extend Dre Greenlaw. I don't even know if you have to extend Dre Greenlaw for it to be a success of a trade. But if you want to take 2024 by the horns and maximize your potential of winning a Super Bowl, getting Dre Greenlaw, a top 25 linebacker, on the last year of his cheap contract might not be the worst idea. Before we get on to my final two steps of a perfect offseason, we do have an awesome deal going on with our friends over at Fanatics where you can get this Brownie the Elf t-shirt 30% 30% off. If you want to re-up your Browns wardrobe, go to chatsports.com slash elf shirt. Now, I put that link in the comments and description. Just click that link and get yourself or get your friend a new Brownie the Elf t-shirt 30% off. Dream, uh, part number two of a dream perfect offseason. Nick Chubb returns. This is what would be a perfect offseason for the Browns. That they get news that Nick Chubb's rehab is going great, he is ahead of schedule, and the Browns are going to get Batman back at 100% in 2024. In a perfect world, Nick Chubb makes a great recovery, a perfect recovery, his rehab goes swimmingly well this offseason, and any contract issues are resolved. How they are resolved, I don't care. Extend him, agree to less money, whatever. But if the Browns are going to be a successful team in 2024, I think Nick Chubb would be a big part of it. And I also want Nick Chubb to be a big part of it. Like Andrew Barry said, no one wants to see Nick Chubb's last carry for Cleveland be week two in Pittsburgh. But there is that not perfect world reality that we have to accept, which is big cap hit, age, knee injury. That's the Bermuda Triangle of death for running backs. So again, if we're talking dream off season, my dream is to get a notification some point this offseason that Nick Chubb's rehab is going perfect. He is ahead of schedule, and the Browns think he could be even ready as soon as training camp. That's pushing it, but it's my dream, so I'll do what I want. But like I said, Andrew Barry did acknowledge that there is some business to this, right? When talked about Nick Chubb during his presser, he said, Nick, I can say for myself, no one in the organization, I understand, our family, Nobody wants to see that carry in Pittsburgh be the last time he carries the ball for the Cleveland Browns. And obviously, there are things that we'll have to work through. But that would not be our intention as well. We obviously will work to keep him on the team. The key word is work, right? They're going to work towards it, but he's not guaranteeing anything. And I think some people kind of lost sight of that when that press conference went down last week. But like I said, age, knee injury, and a near $16 million cap hit, if Nick Chubb, and I wouldn't blame him for this, says no to taking a pay cut because he has been the heart and soul of that locker room for nearly half a decade, and the Browns go, well, we don't want to pay you $15.8 million or cap hit-wise. Will you take less money? And Nick Chubb says no. And the Browns go, well, we have to move on then. Like That could be a very unfortunate reality, and I don't want that the reality to be the case. So in my perfect offseason, Nick Chubb makes a full recovery. I don't care how they get the contract stuff done. They get it done, and 24 comes back. So let's show Nick Chubb some love right now. Spam 24 in the comment section. I want to see who could type 24 the most. I want to see who could type 24 2,400 times. Maybe not that many times. But spam 24 down below in the comment section. Final step in a perfect offseason plan. Sign Mike Evans. There has been a lot of discussion about which wide receiver the Browns should go after this offseason. And Mike Evans, at 30 years old, I still think has some really good football left in him. And Mike Evans, over the last four years, over his entire career, has been one thing, 1K+. That's all he knows. Whether it's in 2020, getting by by six extra yards, all he knows is 1,000 yards. 
And then you toss in all the touchdowns that go along with it. And Mike Evans would be, I think, very, very complimentary to what Deshaun Watson does as a quarterback, which is extend plays, right? And not extend plays so he can take off on his feet. Deshaun Watson is not a runner first. He wants to pass the football. So when he extend plays, he's looking around, and he goes, I got to just kind of chuck it up, F it. Mike Evans is the prototypical F it. He's down there somewhere. He's going to make the catch. He's going to bring it in. Amari Cooper's great at it as well. So let's give, I mean, instead of getting a Batman Robin, you can get two Batmans potentially. Now, when you look at the Browns' wide receiver room, you've got Amari Cooper, Elijah Moore, Cedric Tillman, and David Bell all under contract. Now, I'm sure the Browns are more upbeat than maybe we think they are about Moore and Tillman. Even David Bell, who ended the year on a high note, coming in and playing well in 2024. But if they are serious about getting the best and getting the most out of Deshaun Watson in 2024, getting a guy like Mike Evans surely would go a long way. Now, what would it cost to get Mike Evans? Well, I cooked up a dream, realistic-ish contract. This is on the more team-friendly side. I'm sorry, Mike. But it's a three-year, $50 million contract that pays $16.6 million, and half of it are guaranteed. For a 30-year-old wide receiver, I'm sure Mike Evans is looking for more since his resume speaks for itself. But again, it's my dream. So we're kind of in that middle ground between realistic and what I would like to see happen. I also think DeAndre Hopkins' contract can serve as not quite a baseline, but as a little indicator. Because D-Hop, I wouldn't say was in that very uh, different stage of his career than Mike Evans when they both became free agents or when DeAndre Hopkins became a free agent last year, and Mike Evans will become one this year. Hopkins had missed some time before he became a free agent, but he signed a two-year, $26 million contract. That's an average of $13 million a season. So you turn around to Mike Evans, and you go, we're going to give you an extra year. We're going to give you $15 extra million guaranteed, and we're going to bump your overall salary from $13 million to $16 million. So it's a bump for Mike Evans across the board, but it's not going to reset the wide receiver market. Now, if the Browns, unfortunately, could not land Mike Evans, there are some other very notable wide receivers. Calvin Ridley is a name to watch for. Marquise Brown could bring that speed element they were really hoping to get out of Marquise Goodwin, and ultimately, they could not. Other big-body receivers, Michael Pittman Jr., Noah Brown, they're looking for speedy slot guys, Darnell Mooney, although he plays very well outside as well. K.J. Osborne could be one to watch, Gabriel Davis, so... There are lots of really good wide receivers in free agency. And I'll also add, this NFL draft class is loaded with wide receivers. So for all the teams out there that need help at wide receiver, they may think, sure, we could pay Mike Evans $17 million a season, or we could draft Malik Neighbors or Roma Dunze and pay him a fraction of that for four to five years. Maybe they all decide to just wait for the draft. And then Mike Evans gets a call from his agent going, I got bad news. No one's going to pay you what you're looking for. However, the Browns are interested in paying you a little bit less. How about that? And Maybe that's the way the Browns get to Mike Evans. So which wide receiver do you want to sign? Let's kind of wrap up the show of a perfect offseason for Cleveland by talking about which wide receiver you want to see the Browns sign down below in the comment section. Let's pick a card. Let's pick a card. Let's do it. Trace? Patiently presses all the buttons for this moment right here. I'm so excited. What are you going to go with? I'm going to go with the six of clubs. Six of clubs? I'm going to go with the seven of diamonds. I like it. Ten of spades. Damn. Ten of spades. That's going to do it for us on today's show. Hit me up on Twitter, by the way, or X, I guess, at Matthew PD if you want to talk more brownies over there. DMs are always open. I'm also not too cool to not reply to people, so you can just tweet at me any takes or questions you have, and I'll be sure to get back to you.